we're going to be covering conflict of laws for our MEE Highly Tested Issues Guide. First, let's talk about frequency. Conflict of laws is the least frequently tested topic on the MEE. Additionally, something that's unique about the subject of conflict of laws is that it's not a standalone subject. The National Conference of Bar Examiners, the people who write your exam, have explicitly stated that conflict of laws will not be tested by itself. This means that whenever you see a conflict of law issue, it's going to be tested with another subject. Further, the subject is tested in a rather predictable way. This is because it's usually tested with civil procedure, family law, decedents estates, or corporations and LLCs. Specifically, since 1995, conflict of laws has been tested with civil procedure 10 times. It's been tested with family law seven times, and it's been tested with decedents estates three times, and then corporations and LLCs just once. So let's take a look at some of the highly tested conflict of laws issues. Let's turn first to how it's tested with civil procedure. What the examiners like to test within this subject is the Claxton Doctrine. The law says that when you have a federal district court sitting in diversity jurisdiction, the court must apply the choice of law approach for the state in which the federal court sits. So to give you an example, let's say that a state law claim, specifically a New York tort claim, is brought in federal court on diversity jurisdiction where the plaintiff is from New York and the defendant is from Washington, and plaintiff alleges $100,000 in damages. Pursuant to the Claxton Doctrine, the federal judge hearing the case will have to apply New York's choice of law rules when determining which state's law to apply to that action. Another way the examiners like to test conflict of laws with civil procedure is transfer to a more appropriate forum. This is tested frequently when venue is tested. So under the law, transfer for a more appropriate forum is that the federal court has the authority to transfer a case to another federal district court for the convenience of the parties and the witnesses in the, in the interest of justice. The new court must have subject matter jurisdiction and personal jurisdiction. When transfer happens pursuant to this rule, the new court will apply the law of the transfer or forum. The transfer or forum is the place where the case was originally filed. If you struggle with this rule, I would urge you to think about the rationale behind it. This tip is really helpful for civil procedure generally, because if you can understand why a rule is the way it is, it's more likely that you're going to remember it. The rationale behind this rule is if the lawsuit's properly filed and it's simply being transferred out of convenience, then we should apply the law of the place where it was initially properly filed. If we apply the law of the forum in which we transferred the case, that would be incentivizing the parties to forum shop, which of course we don't want to do. Next, let's turn to how conflict of laws is tested with family law. The most highly tested issue is the recognition of marriage. The rule that you should familiarize yourself with is that a marriage that's valid under the law of the state in which it was contracted will be valid elsewhere unless it violates a strong public policy of the state that has the most significant relationship to the spouses in the marriage. This is virtually always tested with the issue of common law marriage. If the marriage is recognized by the state where the couple entered into the marriage, then it's going to be recognized by the other states. So to give you a quick example, the facts usually state that the parties entered into a common law marriage and that they move or one of them moves to a state that doesn't recognize common law marriage. The question then usually becomes whether or not they're married. And the answer is yes. Since their marriage was valid in the state that they entered into the marriage, then it will be recognized elsewhere. Further, as a general rule, common law marriage does not violate public policy. Examples of things that do violate public policy would be bigamous marriages or incestuous marriages. Another issue that comes up in family law is the full faith and credit clause. The law states that a law must recognize a final judgment of other states so long as that judgment is on the merits and that other state had jurisdiction. So for example, if the parties get validly divorced in one state, it's going to be recognized by all the states. Turning to how conflict of laws is tested with decedents of states. There are two rules that dictate the post-mortem distribution of property. 
So as it relates to personal property, the postmortem distribution of it is governed by the law of the state where the decedent was domiciled at the time of their death. As to real property, it's distributed according to the laws that govern the state where that real property is located. So to give you an example using both rules, let's say that a person dies and at the time of their death, they're domiciled in Florida. However, they own a farm in Michigan. So pursuant to those rules we just covered, the decedent's personal property would be distributed according to Florida law and their farm would be distributed according to Michigan law. Turning to corporations and LLCs, it has only been tested with conflicts of law once, and that was in July of 2021. There were three issues tested on that question, merger, dissenter rights, and foreign corporations. The one rule that I want to touch upon from that essay is merger. So merger is considered a fundamental change that requires the majority of directors and a majority of outstanding shares to agree upon. Merger of a domestic business corporation with a foreign business corporation is permitted by our Model Business Corporations Act. So moving away from our highly tested issues, we want to give you an important tip for responding to conflict of law issues. A big mistake that we see a lot of examinees make is that they feel like they have to go into this lengthy historical background about conflict of laws. And we think the reason for this is that oftentimes conflict of laws is approached from a historical perspective in law school or even by some bar prep courses. But remember, that's not how it's going to be tested on the bar exam. So our tip is that you stick to the question being asked. The examiners do not care about the historical underpinnings and you will not get credit for providing it. Instead, you will likely just be wasting your precious bar exam time. The examiners simply want the rule, an analysis for it, and for you to reach a conclusion. Our final tip for conflict of laws is to practice. Practice is critical for spotting issues involving conflict of laws on the ME. And a little practice can go a long way in getting you those points and in building your confidence. So that wraps up the subject of conflict of laws for our MEE Highly Tested Issues Guide. Mm -hmm.